Promised Land Church invites you and your family to Easter Resurrection Weekend. On Friday, April 18th at 7 p.m., we will have the seven last words with seven of the most dynamic pastors this city has to offer. And on Sunday, April 20th, we want you to come worship with us as there will be youth and children activities. And you don't want to miss this because it's going to be explosive at Promised Land Church in Memphis, Tennessee. We look forward to seeing you with us. John's account, but it's taken from Matthew chapter 21. Uh, so I'm preaching John's account, but I'm taking excerpts from Matthew chapter 21. John chapter 12, and if you would stand for the reading of God's word, John chapter 12, John chapter 12, and I want you to uh, stand for the reading of God's word. John chapter 12, and I want to read, I need to read, I got, got a lot of reading, I need to read verses 9 to verses 16. John chapter 12, and I want to read verses 9 to verses 16. John chapter 12, the gospel according to John chapter 12, beginning at verse 9, and I need to read verses 9 to verse 16. If you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to look on with someone that may be standing beside you. Please make sure that you download uh, the King James Version of the Bible onto your, your, your phones and iPads so that you can have it to read. It says, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh sitting on a donkey's coat. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. If you're not too mean, look at someone that's standing beside you and say, Our pastor is going to preach and teach game changers amen game changers you can be seated i am a game changer look at somebody shout i'm a game changer i'm a game changer i'm a game changer let me give you the thesis for this sermon this thesis here's what this sermon is all about in one short sentence god allows circumstances and situations to change our lives forever how you handle it determines your outcome. Let me see if I can hit rewind and give it to you one more time. In one short sentence, what this sermon is all about is simply this. God allows circumstances and situations to change our lives forever. How you handle it determines your outcome. Well, let's see, because I need you to understand that each one of us as believers in Christ are game changers. Look at somebody shout, I'm a game changer. Uh, that, that, there, is, there, is, there is this play uh, in college football, NC2A football, that is all has been known and termed uh, and donned as the play. It's simply called the play. Because on this particular play in 1982, in a game between the University of California Golden Bears and the Stanford Cardinals in a football game on a Saturday, a cold Saturday in November 1982, y'all, given the circumstances and the rivalry, it became a wild game that proceeded in a very unusual way. Stanford, who was led at the time by John Elway, 
who played many years for the Denver Broncos and now is part owner or, or managing partner of now the Denver Broncos, at that time was the quarterback for the Stanford Cardinals. And what ensued on that day was Stanford marched down the field and scored a touchdown. And y'all, I, mean I mean the crowd went crazy. You would have thought that it was the Super Bowl the way Stanford band began to rush the field because they assumed and thought the game was all over. But they didn't realize that the clock had just a few seconds left. There were about four seconds left in the game and Stanford was only up 20 to 19 off of the score. Well, st what University of California had did, what they did is called the play for the mere fact on the Stanford kickoff, when University of California received the ball, they began to run up the field and they ran into what was called the chaos of the crowd because Stanford Bears had rushed the field and the Stanford Cardinals had rushed the field Field, and all of their band members, all of their fans were on the field, but there was still four seconds to play. And the University of California football team was running up the field with the football in hand, and they began to throw laterals to one another. There were five lateral throws in that re kickoff return, and the reason it's called the play is because you know what occurred, don't you? Uh, University of California ended up in the end zone and won the game, but you do understand there's a few problems with the play. They won the game, got the victory, and they pulled off a huge upset with four seconds left because nobody thought they could do it, but here is what ensued. The band and the fans added to the chaos because they were on the field and should not have ever been on the field. The players on stand for were in the chaos because they were celebrating when they should have been concentrating. I better stop and tell somebody in here that you've got to discover that it may not be, it's not time for you to celebrate. you got to stay concentrated on what you got to stay focused on. And it's a whole lot of us that we're in celebration mode when you need to be in concentration mode because you do understand that the enemy only needs a second just a millisecond to take hold of you and captivate and grab your mind. And that's why you got to stay focused on what the Lord has for you to do. Because you do understand that things can turn around in a second. That things can shift in a second. It can be going good one minute, but then bad in the next minute. Do I have any witnesses here that you were getting ready for retirement? You thought things were okay in life. And and then they came in and they said we're downsizing and right before you were eligible for retirement they gave you a pink slip and told you bye bye. I better tell somebody in here that you gotta stand in guard and watch because the enemy wants to attack. I'm talking to somebody that you were getting ready to get married. You had picked out the dress. You had already paid the caterers. You knew what the altar was going to look like. You had all of your bridesmaids and their colors, but you were jilted at the altar. I'm here to let you know that regardless of what has occurred, that you do understand that you can still be a game changer. I'm talking to somebody right now that you thought that life was going to be a bowl of chocolates, but somehow cancer has riddled your body and everything that you knew has been and turned upside down but I'm talking to somebody in here that knows that I'm a still a game changer why don't you look at somebody and tell them I'm a game changer do I have a witness here I know things may look bad right now but I am still a game changer I'm talking to some parent right now that you thought your daughter was I mean she was saving herself you thought everything was cool copacetic and correct and you come home and find out that that she's pregnant uh, and not pregnant by just anybody but she's pregnant by somebody you despise. Uh, I'm here to let you know uh, that she can still be a game changer. 
Promised Land Church invites you and your family to Easter Resurrection Weekend. On Friday, April 18th at 7 p.m., we will have the seven last words with seven of the most dynamic pastors this city has to offer. And on Sunday, April 20th, we want you to come worship with us as there will be youth and children activities. And you don't want to miss this because it's going to be explosive at Promised Land Church in Memphis, Tennessee. We look forward to seeing you with us. Understand that game changers understand uh, that circumstances and situations uh, can change our lives forever. But how we handle the outcome, uh, how we handle it determines our outcome. Uh, well, let's look at the text before the text becomes a pretext. Uh, in John chapter 12, uh, you do understand that what is occurring in John chapter 12 is we are leading into the Passion Week. Well, let me back up because John chapter 11 is critical for the text uh, because in John chapter 11 you do recall and remember what occurred in chapter 11 don't you uh, that was Jesus' homeboy by the name of Lazarus and Laz got sick. Uh, the Bible says uh, that Lazarus got sick and Lazarus died. Uh, and when Lazarus died, the Bible says uh, that he stayed in the grave uh, for four days. And when Jesus shows up, uh, somebody says he stinks by now. But you do understand uh, that regardless of your stinky situation, uh, that Jesus can handle it. Uh, look at somebody shall Jesus can handle it. He can handle your stinky situation. And notice what Jesus does. He's not afraid of the stinky situation because what he does is Jesus says, roll away the stone. I better tell somebody in here that you locked yourself in to a stinky situation and you've allowed others to rock you into a stinky situation. But is there anybody here that knows that as long as I got Jesus Jesus, I, I do understand that I still got a, I have, still have a chance. I, I better talk to somebody that knows uh, that you, you, you were counted down and out uh, and nobody expected you uh, to make it. But is there anybody here that can testify that because I serve the Lord, uh, oh, is there anybody here that know uh, he was able to take me out of uh, my stinking situation? Well, notice what occurs. The text says in chapter 11, he tells them, roll away the stone. And as they are rolling away the stone, uh, uh, Jesus begins, uh, he begins, the Bible says, Jesus wept. Uh, and Jesus tells them, hey, you do understand that I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he said, if you were dead, if you believe in me, uh, you shall live again. Uh, and, and you know what he does next? Uh, he calls Lazarus' name. Uh, well, as he calls Lazarus name. Uh, Y'all there's something that occurs uh, in the midst of uh, that stinking situation. Uh, the Bible allows us to know uh, that Lazarus comes forth uh, bound hand and foot. Uh, and you better know uh, that whenever you come forward out of your stinky rocked in situation uh, you're going to make some enemies. Do I have a witness here? Because everybody don't want to see you up. Uh, there's some folk that love to see you down. Uh, I wish I had a witness here that you got to know uh, that I know that I may be down right now, but I got a sneaky feeling uh, that I'm about to get up. Uh, look at somebody shout, you about to get up. Uh, I don't know what you're in, uh, but you're about to get up. Okay, watch, watch what occurs, watch what occurs. Uh, in John chapter 11, the Bible says that he calls Lazarus by name. And my boyhood preachers would say the reason why he called Lazarus by name is because he that understands, Jesus understands uh, how much power and authority he truly has. Uh, because if he had simply said, get up, uh, you would have had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob getting up. Uh, you would have had O Eve getting up. Uh, you would have had Sarah getting up. Uh, oh, you would have had... Daniel, Hosea, and Joel getting up. Uh, you would have had old Obadiah and Jonah and Micah and Nahum and Abeka and Zephaniah and Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi getting up. Uh, so he says, uh, I'm not ready for a general resurrection. Uh, I'm ready for a specific restoration. Notice the Bible says he calls Lazarus by name. 
La Lazarus comes forth. Now, he tells them, he said, now, I need you to help in the miracle process. You do understand that whenever there's a miracle, that God always wants you to help in the miracle process. Y'all don't believe me. Okay, remember in John chapter 2 uh, in Cana of Galilee, you remember uh, when he says uh, he goes to the wedding by way of an invite he really does not have. Uh, and his mother says, we've run out of wine. Jesus says, what, 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 you, what I got to do with this? That ain't my problem. Uh, he said, I don't even drink wine. Uh, and and he said, she says, look, I need some wine, baby. You're going to have to help me out. Uh, and Jesus says, I tell you, uh, you, you, that ain't my problem. But Mary's says, whatever he tell y'all to do, uh, looking at his boys, uh, he says, whatever he tell y'all to do, uh, y'all better do it. Uh, and she walks off. Uh, and the next thing we see uh, is that Jesus tells them, uh, hey, take some water and pour it from pot to pot. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, next thing we see is, uh, we see that the king says, uh, why y'all keep this wine here for last? Did the best wine uh, should have been put out first. Uh, come here for a minute uh, because I'm talking to somebody here that needs to know uh, that your best days uh, are yet to come. Uh, I know you done run out of some stuff. Uh, I know some stuff looks desperate and destitute uh, but don't you dare think it's all over because better is yet to come. Uh, is there anybody here that know better is yet to come? Uh, I dare you to shout uh, better is yet to come. Okay, okay. What, what, watch, watch what occurs. Watch what occurs. Watch what occurs. Uh, Bible says the miracle with Lazarus is he tells her, look, take that stuff off him. Look, it's some stuff you can't take off yourself. But God is going to allow somebody to come alongside to help you take off what you are unable to take off. I wish I had somebody in here that could shout about that because that's a word for somebody here today uh, that you can't do it by yourself. Uh, if you got God, that's a great thing. Uh, but somebody else uh, will come alongside uh, to help you get uh, to where God wants you to be. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get to John chapter 12. I said all that to get to John chapter 12. Be because, because, because the text says, in chapter 12, and, and I, I, I need to fast forward because verse 9 says, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. You, you do understand that whenever there's power, whenever there's spiritual power available, somebody's always talking about something. Oh, okay, y'all ain't going to help me out. Uh, and, and, and it ain't all the time good. Sometimes it's bad. But they always talk. And, and you have to know that regardless of whether they're talking about you good or bad, that it's all in God's control. Text says in verse 9, text says he was there. They told him that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also whom he raised from the dead. Let, let me stay right there for about three minutes because many people don't want to see Jesus, but they want to see Lazarus. Okay, let me talk about them for a minute because everybody that come to church, they don't come to see Jesus. It's some folk that come to see sister so-and-so that was going through so-and-so. It's some folk that come to see brother so-and-so because I heard that he did so-and-so. But baby, you got to understand that by the power of Jesus, I've been raised out of what should have done me in. You, you got, you got, you got, you got, you got a lot of folk. They don't want to see Jesus. Because they understand if they see Jesus, they may get changed. So what they want to see is, they want to see the thing that Jesus changed. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me right here. Because you got some folk that love to talk about what used to have been. Oh, uh, okay, y'all gonna sit there and pretend like you're too pretty today to talk to me. Uh, you got some folk that they don't wanna, they don't wanna see Jesus, uh, but they only wanna see what Jesus has changed uh, so that they can talk about uh, and inspect what Jesus did. 
That's why you got folk that'll look at you and see everything that God has done for you and they bring up your past. Oh, y'all don't have no folk around y'all that bring up your past. You know, they love to talk about what you used to do. But baby, will you stop talking about what I used to do and start talking about what the Lord has done for me? I wish I had a witness here because if you knew everything that God has done for me, you wouldn't be busy talking about what I used to be. And it's a whole lot of us that know that we used to be that. But I ain't that no more. Oh, I wish I had a witness. I might struggle sometime, but I ain't that no more. I might fall sometime, but I ain't that no more. And it's a whole lot of us that because we have a struggle and fall, we allow folk to identify us based upon where we were. Okay, okay, okay. That's why folk only can remember the bad stuff you did and never the good stuff. That's why somebody can put out a rumor on a pastor or a church and everybody empties out the church. It's because folk don't remember all the folk that were saved. They don't remember all the folk that got light bills paid. They don't remember all the mortgages that got paid. They don't, they don't remember all the good stuff. They remember just the bad stuff. Many people don't want to see Jesus, but they came to see Lazarus. And the thing with that is, Lazarus couldn't raise himself out of the grave. Now, why would you come to see Lazarus and Lazarus couldn't get out of the last chapter without Jesus? Oh, okay, you're going to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. You, you looking at somebody and you trying to figure out how did they get that car? How did they get delivered? How did they get that family? How did they get that house? It ain't them. It's the power of God that chooses to give them mercies every day. And you sitting there being jealous about what the Lord has done. Look at somebody and shout, you don't know all I've been through. You, 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 you looking at this suit, but you don't know all that I've been through. You, you see the suit well put together, the, the matching tie. You don't know all that I had to go through to get to where I am. A lot of folk, they, they, see, they see the church in one place, but you don't know how many nights me and Janine had to stay up all night long trying to figure out how this was going to get paid and how that was you. You didn't see that. You, 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 didn't see, you didn't see how many times folk lied on us and talked about us and scandalized our name and said we was this and said we was that. But yet we still had to pray for them, still had to smile. Do I have a witness here? You got to understand, you don't know all I've been through. Okay, okay. Let me get back to it. In, in John chapter 12, in verse 10, let me, I lost it, I apologize. I forgot, I forgot the cameras were here, I apologize. But, but verse 10 says, but the chief priest, <laughs> I can say a word about the chief priest, because you do know who the chief priests are. The chief priests are the ones that have no power, but they want to be an authority. Now, now, I can say a word about that. However, I got to move on. Because we got a whole bunch of chief priests. <laughs> they they, they want to be an authority, but they have no power. You know, the city of Memphis got a lot of chief priests. 
Oh, y'all, y'all ain't gonna, y'all ain't gonna get with me now. That's fine. You, you, you got a lot of chief priests in the city. They make decisions because they have authority, but they don't have no power. It amazes me how you can talk about uh, the, the, the suburbanites, but you can forget about the inner city. It amazes me how, how, how all the suburbans, they got their sidewalks and their nights and pristine and they keep them new. The holes in the street are, are filled, but in the inner city, you don't have sidewalks, you don't have street lights, you don't have signs, you don't. I wish I had somebody that could talk to me. Got a bunch of chief priests. I got to behave. The chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. You see, not only did they want Jesus dead, but they also wanted the miracle that Jesus had done dead. There are some people that are consulting on doing you in. Okay, y'all ain't going to feel me on that. You, you, got, you got some folk that are meeting behind some closed doors so that they can see how they can bring about your demise. You, you have some people that don't like you, that don't know you, and watch this, they trying to do you in before they ever know anything about you. But you got to know that I didn't come here to be done in uh, because God got a plan for me. Uh, do I have a witness here? If you know that God got a plan for you, uh, you don't have to be worried about uh, what the chief priest going to do uh, because God will prepare a table in the very presence of the chief priest uh, and they will do you no harm. Please watch out for the chief priest. Watch out for the chief priest. But, but notice the text says, people want to do you in because you are the evidence of what God can do. Okay. Look, look, look at verse 11. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away. Now, now notice, there were many religious people. They weren't spiritual. They were religious. Promised Land Church invites you and your family to Easter Resurrection Weekend. On Friday, April 18th at 7 p.m., we will have the seven last words with seven of the most dynamic pastors this city has to offer. And on Sunday, April 20th, we want you to come worship with us as there will be youth and children activities and you don't want to miss this because it's going to be explosive at Promised Land Church in Memphis, Tennessee. We look forward to seeing you with us.